if you're interested in learning more about Buzzy's Bees, I'll be in the narthex. If you need to chat with me or someone, uh, contact Shosh and she'll put us in touch. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nancy. Uh, this year, uh, the, bo the board at SNLC, uh, we actually, they, we, I'm not on the board, to be clear, uh, voted to do a larger donation than we have the past few Mother's Days, and they voted to do a $1,000 donation to Buzzy Speeds this year. So really exciting uh, to partner with this wonderful organization. Um, I'm actually going to uh, skip ahead here, uh, a couple announcements, and I'm going to invite the scholarship crew to come on forward here with Susan Myrie. Uh, she's going to come and she's going to introduce us to this year's foundation scholarship uh, winners and uh, they're going to receive some, some good stuff here from all of us here. So I'm going to pass the mic to Susan. It's my privilege to speak on behalf of the Foundation Board to introduce 60% of this year's scholarship recipients. We know that these um, young people are going to go far because they were willing to get up early and come to the 830 service. So hats off to you. The St. Matthew Foundation is a permanent endowment. Donations made to the Foundation are invested, and then these investments generate earnings. Those earnings are used to support ministry programs around St. Matthew, and one of those programs are the foundation uh, scholarships that we are highlighting today. So will each recipient tell us your name, where you're going to school, and what you'll be studying? My name is Elise. I'm planning on going to OSU, Oregon State, and I'm also studying biology. My name is Rory, I'm going to Gonzaga, and I'm going to study business with a focus in international relations. Hi, I'm Charlotte Moore. I'll be attending the University of Oregon and studying advertising. So I mentioned that scholarships are from the foundation, but in reality, they're from all of you. The foundation would not exist were it not for your generous support throughout the years. So thank you for your support for the foundation, and please join me in congratulating this year's scholarship recipients. Good job. You can go now. Yeah, you're good. Find your family. All right, a couple more quick things to make note of here in the announcements. Uh, if you notice, this week's bulletin looks a little bit different in a couple spots. Uh, the goal of this is not to mess with you, believe it or not. It's to try to provide clearer and more concise information to you. If this doesn't do that for you, please feel free to leave a comment and those wonderful yellow cards that you're all going to fill out in front of you anyway, right? Uh, so new look for the bulletin. Let us know what's helpful. Let us know what isn't. Um, lots of good stuff to write about in there today as well. And a couple of things just to, to highlight. The, the first thing of which is some of you may know we had a pretty fun auction last Sunday night. Anybody, was anybody here there? All right, a few of you were there. It was a great time. Um, you know, I tried to skip parts of the auction. I was so excited, so delusional from all the money that was being given. Uh, we, know, we know now for sure that we raised over $30,000 in total. Uh, it was a great night. It was a lot of fun. Give yourselves a, a round of applause. So on behalf of the Mexico team, we just say thank you uh, for all your continuing uh, support for, for that endeavor. Um, everything else that is in here, you can make note of. Uh, if you need a contact person, there's now a list of contact people on the back of your bulletin to contact folks about the various ministries we have here at St. Matthew. Can we start our service together here in a time of prayer? Is that all right? Let's pray. Yeah, go ahead and stand. Thank you. Jen New. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may now kneel as you are comfortably able.
Now let us confess together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin, captive for yourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained as a called member of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Join us for our opening. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty Go away. 
be with you and also with you we pray together the prayer of the day God of resurrection you have promised new life to all who believe make us believers and show us how to live into this new life we pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord amen you may be seated Do the children's message? Yeah. yeah. Come on up. Baby kids, come up too. Kids, come yeah. on up. <laughs> we can wait. We got lots. How's everybody today? Good? Actually good, or do you just say good because we ask you and you feel like you're not allowed to say if you're doing bad? That perfectly explained it, Maya says. All right. So everybody's doing good? We're all doing good at least, right? We're tired. pretending? Tired. 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 Matthew's tired. All right. Got it. Um, today's a fun day, and I want to tell you a little bit about something that you're not going to see at this service, but I think is pretty cool. Okay? What do you guys see in front of you here on the, on the rails here? Quilts. Quilts. How many of you have a quilt? Maya's got a quilt. You got a quilt? Do you guys know who your quilts are from? Yeah. Yeah? Mom, mom. Your mom made you a quilt? Okay, awesome. Maya, do you know who your quilt is from? No idea. I bet your mom knows, but yeah. Right? You, quilts are usually from somebody we know, right? There's a lot of times quilts are given as a gift, okay? And so one of the cool things that we do every year for our high school seniors, right? So for some of you, that's a ways away, right? our high school seniors, we give them a quilt, okay? And when I say we, all right, we sounds like a lot of people, but we is actually someone in the congregation makes that quilt for them, okay? They take the time, they sew it, they mat it, they put the pieces together, they get information about what colors the students like, and they make them one of these wonderful quilts that you see in front of you, okay? And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab one of these, and I... Don't remember which one I was supposed to grab, so I'm going to grab the nearest one, okay? So I want you guys to look at this, because I think they're pretty cool. All right? So these quilts, right, have a pattern, right? And you repeat that pattern over and over again in a few different ways, right? And then from there, you take all those individual pieces and you sew them together, then you add it to a backing, and you take those backings and you sew them together, right? It's a lot of steps, all right? I went on YouTube to learn about quilting. I watched videos on double speed for hours, all right? What I learned is I would make a really bad quilter, okay? But the people, the people who make these quilts do it as an act of love because it's not an easy task. It's very difficult to do. And frankly, um, it's something that not everyone can do because it takes a special skill set, okay? So what we're going to do later today is we're going to take this quilt, right? We're going to wrap it around our students, three of whom you saw up here today, right? Receive their scholarships. We're going to wrap it around them, okay? And then we're going to pray over them. But when we give them this quilt, we're reminding them about an important piece of today's scripture, okay? You're going to hear a couple different scriptures today. One is going to be about Ruth and Naomi. Another is going to be a story you're probably familiar with from the Good Samaritan story. Okay? But when we wrap them with these quilts, it's a reminder of a phrase that Ruth says to Naomi. Okay? When Ruth 
is given the option to leave Naomi. We're going to talk about this in a little bit. But when Ruth is given the option to leave Naomi, Naomi's kind of trying to get rid of her. Right? And being like, go, go, go. It's okay. Go, go, go. Ruth says, no. I'm going to stay with you. Then she says this phrase that stuck with me for a long time. She says, your people will be my people and your God will be my God. And when we wrap our students in that quilt, that's what we're reminding them. That no matter where they go, they're taking a piece of St. Matthew with them. Okay? So I want you to remember that as we pass these quilts out today, as you see them, as you see these students, you can tell them goodbye. You can tell them thank you for being shepherds and leaders to you guys at VBS and different places. But most of all, I want you to remember that they're not leaving our church. They're actually taking our church with, uh, with them out into the world. Okay? That's why we give them these quilts, to remind them of where they came from and that their God is our God and their people are our people. Okay? All right, let's pray together. God, we thank you for the, the gift of these quilters and what they bestow on our seniors, Lord. We thank you that you are a God of grace and wisdom and love. We thank you also today for all of the wonderful mothers in the congregation as well. It's in your name we pray and all God's children said, Amen. A reading from Ruth, the first chapter. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, where she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had considered his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, and she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. Lord, grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them, and they, uh, and they wept aloud. They said to her, No, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, Turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way, for I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters, it has been far more bitter for me than for you because the hand that the Lord has turned uh, against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Return to your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me and more as well if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. So the two of them went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they uh, came to Bethlehem, the whole, whole town, uh, uh, the whole town stirred because of them. And the women said, is that Naomi? Here ends the reading. Please stand as you're comfortably able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy 
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 10th chapter. Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to just himself, justify himself, he asked Jesus, well, who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him and beat him and went away leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, uh, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him, and he bandaged his wounds, having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of the three of these do you think was a member, uh, was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated.
That was a beautiful piece. That was gorgeous. Morning. 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 Happy Mother's Day to all of the moms out there. Uh, just show of hands, how many moms do we have here this morning? There's quite a few of you. Motherly type figures as well. Um, whether you're mom, mom adjacent, or uh, anything in between, I do truly wish you a happy Mother's Day. Uh, I personally have a somewhat complicated relationship with my mother. Uh, in fact, uh, if we were handing out, oh, you know, I'm being graded on this sermon for seminary, and so that's a wonderful way to start. Shall we continue? <laughs> uh, in fact, if we were handing out uh, high school yearbook awards for my mom, I might nominate her for being most likely to be violently shaken by a stranger. Um, we have a complicated relationship. Yet, even then, I have foundational memories with my mother uh, that cannot be shaken. Uh, my parents were divorced when I was about four and a half years old and I lived with my mom solo the majority of the time. I grew up in the North Dakota area in Grand Forks and Fargo, and in particular, went to first and uh, second grade, including kindergarten, in Fargo, North Dakota. I have this foundational memory of my mom as superwoman, and I don't actually know how many times it happened. But for those of you who don't know, in Fargo, uh, when it snows in the winter time, we actually go to school. <laughs> okay, we trek out into the cold, into the wind, into the breezy nature, and we go and we actually attend school, which means our parents have to find a way to get us there if we're in elementary school, particularly if we're not in the bus system. I went every morning to the YMCA for some pre-morning care, and then the Y got us to school on, on, in a bus situation. That YMCA was what seemed like the longest walk in the world away from our house. Now really, it was inside of our house. But when you're in kindergarten, insight can still feel like forever away. And it was up a hill. Not both ways, just one of them, right? It was up a hill. And so in the winter time, when it got extra snowy, the, um, the driveway to the apartment um, parking garage would fill with snow and it was very difficult to exit. My mom drove a Chrysler LeBaron, so it wasn't like you were gonna go four-wheeling over the snow to go a couple blocks. And so I have these vivid memories of my mom bundling me up and basically dragging me up to the hill, uh, up the hill to the YMCA uh, in the morning, uh, in the freezing cold, and me whining the whole entire way, okay? Uh, so I say all that to say, even though She's somebody I haven't agreed with in like the last 28 years. Moms are the best. Some of you may be aware that uh, many of us on staff had a pretty busy week this week. Uh, we started last Saturday with auction prep. Then we had our auction. Again, thank you for your generosity. Uh, that rolled directly into our two-day staff retreat. Uh, which rolled into our regular Wednesday night activities, which then piggybacked for me into a colonoscopy prep and a colonoscopy. <laughs> Still had to write a sermon, all right? My daughter's ninth birthday party was on Saturday, and then I get to join all of you here to preach today. And all of that is to say that qualified me for being the second busiest person in my house. See, my wife did all those things I did, came to the auction, helped with prep, went to the staff retreat, took care of sick children, worked her other full-time job that she has, uh, took care of a whiny fifth child who had to get a colonoscopy, um, planned a birthday party, set up for a birthday party, cleaned up for a birthday party, and had to deal with me writing a sermon, which sometimes consists of getting distracted by YouTube videos. Again, all that is to say, moms are the best. One final piece of evidence as to how we know moms are the best. I'm going to show you this lovely picture here. All right? Okay? If you're like, huh, that's an interesting looking child. That is my daughter, Ainsley. 
This is uh, among the first photos taken of her. And uh, we posted these photos shortly after Michaela gave birth to Ainsley. I'm going to read you some of the comments. <laughs> that baby looks just like you, Justin Thomas Devine. <laughs> same hair part and everything. <laughs> OMG, Cole and I said the same thing. Look at all that hair. That's more hair than all three of mine put together. It's a mini Justin. Justin, I love these pics of your sweet Ainsley. This is on Michaela's Facebook page, by the way. So much hair. I'm in awe of how much she looks like her dad. How did I miss the fact that you two were having a baby? <laughs> Justin, she does look like you. I'm still in awe about her hair. Congratulations, congratulations. To echo everyone else, she looks just like Justin. A precious baby. Wow, Justin, that looks like you. I'm happy for you both. And lastly, Justin Thomas Devine, it looks like you made her all alone. She's your twin. Now, despite the fact that my lovely daughter, who is now nine, came out of the womb looking just like her father, only slightly punched in the face so just a little bit, full head of hair and everything, my wife took care of her, loved her, nursed her, did all the mom things, and nobody once gave her any credit for participation after 15 hours of labor and four hours of extremely difficult portions of labor. Again, moms are the best, okay? Motherly love has this sort of impact on us. It's this different thing that we feel. It's like three parts kindness, two parts care, sprinkled in with a lot of protectiveness, right? And motherly love is a, a beautiful blessing that maybe not everybody gets to experience all the time from their own mom or different situations, but everybody, I think, experiences it some of the time, okay? I think motherly love is this gift from God that we get um, that is instilled in mothers, and I, I think it looks a little different sometimes than fatherly love, whether that's natural, cultural, whatever, it doesn't matter. It just kind of looks and feels a little bit different, I think. And it's that gentleness, that kindness, that fruit of the spirit feeling love that we just know, oh, our mom loves us. It's the one that allows us to cuddle up to our moms in the pews as we listen to a sermon on Sunday morning. I see that happening right now, okay? Mother love is really great. Yet, mother love still a little bit has its limitations. Mother love is often directed and targeted at a particular individual. And I say this because if you've better, ever been on the receiving end of the protective side of motherly love, you know it doesn't feel so great. In other words, when you receive that mama bear love, we sometimes quiver in fear because nobody wants to mess with mama bear. Likewise, moms can on occasion drive us a little crazy, be slower to let us go sometimes because they love and care for us so much. But I think Naomi had this motherly love thing down. We read our scripture today, and in case you don't have like the Israel marital codes and the uh, Elimelech family tree, like on download, I'm just gonna run you through what's going on today, okay? We have a couple, they're from Bethlehem. Yes, that Bethlehem. That's Naomi's family, right? Uh, Naomi and Elimelech, okay? Then from there, right, they have two sons. Their sons are uh, Kilion and Malon, okay? And they marry two women, Orpah and Ruth, okay? Everybody kinda get this? Got a whole marriage thing, all right? And then in a standard twist of Old Testament fate, all the men die, okay? You may remember that the Sadducees do this to Jesus in a hypothetical, who are the wives gonna marry when all the brothers die in a situation, right? Because we have this really archaic system where if you're married to one brother and the younger brother's not married and the brother you're married to dies, then you gotta marry the next brother, 
we may not have heard of that. It's in the Bible. It's weird. We don't like it. It doesn't pass the 21st century smell test, but it's the way it was, okay? So all of those things exist here in our Old Testament situation. Again, all the men, they die, okay? From there, Naomi, Ruth, Orpah, they're kind of living as this trio. Naomi's going through it. She's sad. Now remember, Naomi's lost her husband and both of her sons in a very recent period of time, okay? That is driving her emotions. That's driving her feelings, okay? And she is trying to now then send Orpah and Ruth out on their way, okay? Go back to your homes. Go back to to where you came from. Leave me alone, let me be. This is where Ruth, I think, says one of the most profound things in in all of scripture, and it's, it's hard to imagine. See, Naomi has just released Ruth. She said, you no longer have any social obligation to me. All right, if you're following along your sermon notes, that's the first blank you get to fill in, that word social, okay? There's no longer any social obligation that Ruth has to Naomi. And Ruth says, no, I'm not leaving you, okay? All right, I, wanna, I want you to really dial into this because I think it's just a, an amazing moment. Naomi is Ruth's mother-in-law. Think about how you feel about your mother-in-law. Don't laugh too loudly, okay? Now it's also her ex-mother-in-law, all right? And Ruth is like, no, I will not leave you. I will not abandon you, all right? Your God is my God. Your people are my people. Where you go, I will go. Where you die, I will die. I am with you. We're a team. That's a crazy response to Naomi's grief and pain. Naomi, who's trying to just send the world away. I'm going to go back home. I'm going to go back to Bethlehem. I'm going to go, and I'm going to live out my life, okay? And Naomi drives Ruth through this crazy hypothetical of, I don't have any more children to bear. You can't possibly marry one of my sons. There's no reason for you to be with me. And Ruth says, too bad. I'm staying. You can't get rid of me that easily. What amplifies this story even more is Ruth is from Moab, all right? This is one of those weird Old Testament details that might not make a lot of sense, but it's important to note because it goes with our second scripture as well. In the Old Testament, in Deuteronomy, there's a couple things about the Moabites, all right? The Moabites get equated in some ways with the Canaanites in that you're not supposed to have Israelite Moabite marriages in some settings. In fact, Israel and Moab are never supposed to have a treaty together. Okay? All right? If you will, Ruth is the good Moabite. Okay? That is the deviation from the norm. It's the deviation from the standard. Ruth is behaving differently than expected, countercultural. She's a Jewish convert, if you will, in this moment. All right? She didn't come in as an Israelite, she's a Moabite being brought into this world into this, this woman's household, into this loving, kind relationship. Now, I think one of the things that stands out about this situation to, to me is if you read this story, the book title is Ruth. But this part, this chapter, is all about Naomi. It's about how Naomi feels. It's about how Naomi gets cared for. It's about what's driving Naomi's thought process. It's about Naomi losing her children, her sons. This particular part of the story is Naomi's story in the book of Ruth. But we have this tendency, we tend to read stories from the perspective of the hero. All right, following along, you can fill in that word too. But we read stories and we tell stories from the perspective of the hero because we like it makes us feel good. We don't like to think about the person who was in pain. We like to think about the person who saved the day. The meat of this story is that Naomi is wounded in need of love. Yes, Ruth shows up to save the day, but the story is about Naomi, her grief, and what she is going through. Naomi loved her children-in-law so much that when Naomi came and needed that love and reciprocity, she got it in spades from Ruth. Now I'm going to advance us a little forward here as we make note of a few of those, those details to 
the story of the Good Samaritan. The story of the Good Samaritan, a lot of us will know. But what some of us might not know is if you tell that story to a group of children who have not listened to it before, they'll rename it for you. They'll say, Dad, can you tell us that story again about the hurt man? See, when children hear the story, they hear it with empathy, right? They're not focused on the action of the hero the same way, right? It's a different type of story. We tend to tell stories from the perspective of the hero, and it changes our viewpoint on the message, okay? One of the interesting things about the Good Samaritan story is we get the priest and the Levite out of context, out into the world, okay? And it creates a situation where even though they're a priest and the, and the Levite, the priest and the Levite are under no social obligation to the hurt man, okay? And what do they do? They walk by, they walk past. See, and I know this is true because I'm so guilty of it. See, if somebody walks in our doors here at church, our church team, our church staff, we can't help them fast enough. You walk into our doors when we're here Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you need something, you need help, we'll move heaven and earth to try to get you that. Okay? But probably wrap myself out here, but every time I drive by 185th and Baseline and I see that gentleman standing in the street median holding the sign in need of help, in need of money, even when it's clever and says, I'm really just going to use it on beer and it makes me laugh, the second that gentleman tries to make eye contact with me, I'm immediately looking for the other direction. I'm immediately pretending I don't see him. I turn into the priest and the Levite because in that moment, my social obligation to help this man has been removed. Okay? I don't want to be that way. I just am. I don't like that I turn my head, that I feel that I don't want to make eye contact because that somehow might create social obligation for me to give something to the man. I'd want to look the other way and carry on with my day. I want to be like the priest and the Levite in that moment. What makes the story about Ruth and the story about the Good Samaritan so different is they are countercultural examples who behave the right way. See, Ruth was the Moabite behaving the way that we want the Israelites to behave. The Samaritan is the one behaving how we want the priest and the Levite to behave. It doubles the impact of these stories. Now, the pinnacle of Christian love, in my opinion, the, the calling of Christian love, is to take that motherly love that we get, and it's then to go and apply it to situations where we have no social obligation. Ruth behaved in this way, the Good Samaritan behaved in this way. Now I will tell you point blank, I didn't know I was bad at this, okay? Because I realized I'd gotten really good at creating social obligation. See. I'm good at building relationships. I'm good at making friends. I'm good at talking to strangers, okay? If I know you, I will implicitly care about you. If you're one of my students, I will move heaven and earth to make sure you have what you need. I'm really good at caring for people I know. I'm good at caring for people I've already cared about. The stranger is tougher. The abstract is tougher. I didn't know I was bad at this till June 1st of 2020. See, I had a meeting with some of my students, and they're like, Justin, have you watched this video yet? Have you watched it? I said to myself, no, what are you talking about? I was busy during the pandemic trying to run all of the underworkings of a church. My, my title during the pandemic, if you didn't know it, my previous church was director of all church activities. <laughs> Sounds made up, because it was. <laughs> Right? This is what happens when your pastor gets brain cancer in the middle of the pandemic. They just go, you go and do it all, okay? I was in my bubble, and they said, go watch this video. It's 12 minutes. Go watch it. I said, okay. 
It was a 12-minute compilation of all the videos that observed the George Floyd murder. And I watched it. Found myself a passive observer yelling at my computer screen, begging the people to go past the police officers, begging somebody to drop through the line, begging somebody to do something different. I thought it was fictional. I said, at some point, this is going to stop. And the clock kept ticking and ticking. Eight minutes and 46 seconds worth of kneeling. See, I didn't know I was bad at feeling this empathy. And then George Floyd's murder broke me. And it broke me in a way that wasn't just about what I was watching. It was about what I was experiencing and what I was feeling. I'm telling you, this was a spiritual thing. This is not a political thing. I'm not wired that way. It broke me because in my mind I went... You've watched these videos the wrong way. When you heard about Trayvon Martin, you responded poorly. When you heard about Breonna Taylor, you responded poorly. When you heard about Tamir Rice, you responded poorly. When you heard about Michael Brown, you responded poor poorly. I didn't know I was bad at loving strangers until it was too in front of my face for me to avoid. You see, I'm not here today if I don't get motherly love from those who had no social obligation to me. See, it was a mother who, when I got kicked out of my own house, took me in, fed me, clothed me, made sure I had a car to get to work. Georgia Stevenless was my good Bedfordite. When we moved out to Maryland and we knew no one, and we had no resources and no contacts, it was a mother who came to us and said, your children are my grandchildren because you don't have any grandparents here, we're gonna be your grandparents. And just two years ago, when my wife was estranged from her mother, it was a mom who went to her and said, I'll be your mom till your mom wants the job back. When we look people in the eye and we say, your people are my people and your God is my God and mean it, it has a profound impact and it changes lives. So these quilts that we give these students that are a reminder that your people are my people and your God is my God, when they carry that with them, they carry that message out into the world. We're equipping them and sending them to tell the world, your people are my people and your God is my God. Amen. Can we stand and share the Apostles' Creed together? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Uh, we're going to take a minute and share God's peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let's share God's peace. Hi, guys. Yeah, right. right up here, yep. right up here. Peace, oh, yeah. peace, peace.
up and kiss you and we'll whack you in our arms. Oh, yeah. She's a lady who will love you and will cuddle you and hug you. And she's mama, 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 My first words were mama, 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 have you heard? She's a lady who will pick you up and kiss you and will rock you in her arms. Oh, yeah. She's a lady who will love you and will cuddle you and hug you. And she's mama, 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 mine. Now it may be an auntie, a sister, or a granny to be the one to give a mother's love. But no matter who may give it, a mother's love's a gift that comes down from the Father up above. Mama, 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 my first words were Mama, 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 have you heard? She's a lady who will pick you up and kiss you and will rock you in her arms. Oh, yeah. She's a lady who will love you and will cuddle you and hug you and she's mama, 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 mine. Now it may be an auntie, a sister, or a granny to be the one to give a mother's love. But no matter who may give it, a mother's love's a gift that comes down from the Father up above. Mama, 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 that first words were, mama, 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 have you heard? She's a lady who will pick you up and kiss you and will rock you in her arms. Oh, yeah. She's a lady who will love you and will cuddle you and hug you. And she's mama, 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 We are indebted to uh, to Mama's love and uh, and the gift of it. How it um, it comforts us uh, before we know who we are or the world we live in, and that um, teaches us and inspires us um, in uh, in years beyond um, those days. Lord, we uh, we pray that you would grant us the grace and the courage. Uh, to uh, to bless our moms on this day and uh, and to be inspired uh, by the faithfulness of uh, of that amazing love, Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for uh, for our, our graduates uh, here at St. Matthew, um, the students who will be wrapped in the love of these quilts and this congregation uh, in the next service. We pray that you would. Uh, uh, you would bless them uh, through that gift uh, to be reminded not only of this uh, community of, uh, of, of loving, uh, faithful uh, mothers, fathers, friends, um, but also of your great love uh, that stands far beyond uh, all we can imagine or all we can live up to. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for, uh, for the gift of, uh, of your grace and uh, in, in how it inspires us to, uh, to remember all those that are on our hearts and minds with, uh, with motherly love. Um, we know individuals who need grace today. We know they need healing. We know they need comfort. We know they need encouragement. Lord, we lift them to your care, even as you lift them to ours. And we speak their names uh, to you now in our silent prayers. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our closing hymn. Peace serve the Lord.